Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Hey, did you ever watch that TV series, The Big Bang Theory? There's a character on there, kind of a science geek, who had a, <laughs> he had a video series that he called Fun With Flags. Well, today we're gonna do John's Fun With Timers. <laughs> Yeah, as I put this one together, that series came to my mind. Like, yeah, Sheldon used to get on and, and have all this fun with flags, and he was really into it. And as I was putting this one together, I kept thinking, <laughs> you're, like, you're like, Sheldon, you're getting your geek on over flight timers. But you know, flight timers are important because they can have a pretty meaningful impact on different things, like whether or not your plane stays in the air. That's kind of a big one. And then how much damage you can do to your battery if you over discharge it by staying in the air too long and OpenTX has some really powerful capabilities around timers and they even have some pretty decent options for default timer alert settings so we have three things I've got to cover in order to make all this work number one we're going to explain the timer types. so you've got three different timer types we're gonna cover those and then number two we're gonna explain the OpenTX defined alerts so I'm gonna cover what these countdowns mean what the minute call means what different countdown options are and then number three, we'll get into the advanced management strategies for timers. I wanna front load this by saying that once you set up a timer, you can set it to a source, turn on an alert, and go fly your plane. So if you have no interest in learning these advanced concepts, just stick around while I explain what the countdowns are and how the alerts work, and then stop. And go fly your plane and go have fun and don't worry about it. But if you'd like to get a little bit more out of your timers and have your timers work for you, then you'll wanna stick around when we get into the logical switches and special functions. All right, so let's jump into it. As you can see in my setup, I've got two different flight timers identified. I've got flight time and total time, and for the purposes of keeping it simple, I've got them set to use a throttle stick. And let's say, just for reality's sake, that I've got a plane that flies for, let's see, it flies for nine minutes even. Okay, so we'll set the timer for nine minutes. That's a very normal setup. So I'm gonna turn on my simulator, I'm gonna put the throttle on, and you'll see my timer start counting down from nine. Okay, so that's a normal setup. If you did nothing else with this setup, this is what would happen. Your timer would count down to zero and you'd be good to go. Now right now, I have no alert set up. I'll get into the alerts later, but right now I wanna explain the timer types. Okay, you'll notice in the timer types, there are three different options. There's not persistent, persistent flight, and persistent manual reset. Persistent manual reset is the one that I use to log my total time on an airframe. Persistent flight is a resettable timer from the main menu under options. When you pre long press the jog dial and hit reset, you can reset for a flight. And not persistent basically empties or resets to zero whenever you reboot, change models, or turn the radio off. For general flight purposes, I just use the not persistent option and I set it to whatever time I want, whatever source I want. So to recap this real quick, for a normal flight timer, I just use not persistent. For a log of the total time that I've put on an airframe, I use persistent manual reset. And then persistent flight, I think, is more of an option when you want to be able to land an aircraft, change a battery out, and go fly again and still keep your timer going. And that's really what that's about. All right, that covers the timer types. Let's take a look at the alerts available by default in OpenTX. So you notice you've got countdown and minute call. What countdown does, this applies to what happens when the timer hits 30 seconds. Once you hit 30 seconds, whatever you put in this box will occur from 30 seconds and then every 10 seconds down to zero after that. So 30, 20, 10, and zero. Okay, so you can have it be silent, you can have it beep, you can have a voice alert that says 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10, or you can get haptic feedback. So those are your three options for the defined alerts that go along with these timers. I don't really see on countdown any value for a persistent timer if it's counting up. And then the other thing you can add is a minute call. Now the minute call is kind of a nice feature, but imagine if you've got a flight that's nine or 10 or 12 minutes and you're out there flying and every minute your radio's going 10 minutes, nine minutes, eight minutes, seven minutes, it gets a little annoying. You're trying to fly and enjoy yourself. You don't need your radio correcting or telling you you know, every minute that something's going on. It's, to me, I find that highly annoying, so I never use this. Let's take a look at trigger sources for timers as well. There are a couple of different options you can use. One of the more common is throttle stick. So THS, the, what THS does is as soon as you move that throttle stick, 
it starts counting. And as soon as you move the throttle stick off, it stops counting. That's a very basic trigger that if you're not into getting into advanced configurations, that's the one I would use because the idea is that when your throttle stick is moved off of zero, that's when you actually start consuming current. And when it's zero, you don't. There's a variation on that theme with throttle percentage where at or below 10%, it uses approximately 1 13th. So every 13 seconds, the timer increments by a second. And then at half throttle, it increments by one second every other second. And at full throttle, it increments one second every second. That one's okay, but to me, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I get the logic behind it, but I'm not sure. I, I, that's one I think that maybe if you're into this kind of thing, you could go test it and see if it works for you. Personally, I just go ahead and go with the throttle stick uh, for a basic setup. And then the last one is THT. And what this one does is it starts that countdown. And once it starts, it doesn't stop until you reset the timer. Of course, for me, I use a logical configuration where I start my timer once my stick is advanced past negative 95 and my throttle cut is off. That way, when I'm testing on the bench, I don't increment my flight timer or more importantly to me, my cumulative timer. All right, if all you wanted to do is understand the basics of timers in OpenTX, you've got what you come for. You can stop here and go fly your plane. Have a great day. If you wanna learn some advanced techniques, let's move on to step number three. Right, and step number three, this is just some fun, right? I just wanted to have some fun with this and give you guys some ideas and again, exploit the power of OpenTX and give you a look at different capabilities in logical switches and special functions that you can use to make your timers work for you. I will also stipulate because I keep getting this conversation. You don't have to do any of this stuff, right? You, the, the way I have it set up right now, if I fire off this simulator and I turn my throttle to go, I get a timer, everything works, yay, we're, we're in business, right? You don't have to do any of this stuff, but if you want to get more out of your radio, take a look at this configuration. And by the way, just because I say it's a, a sticky or an edge activates after three tenths of a second and I want my timer to be set at 301, that doesn't mean that's what you have to do. I did a video the other day on curves and I showed this concept of a dead band. What I neglected to say was that you don't need a dead band at all. You, you, you could get rid of the dead band altogether and just have a simple curve. But I didn't say that in the video. And that's a point I wanna make as I go through these demo videos is you don't have to use my configuration. My configuration is just an example. You may have different ideas, but once you get the logic of it, then you can say, oh, I see, I can do this and this. And, and you can make it work how you want it to work. All right, let's take a look at logical switches. And as you can see, I've got four of them defined. I've got two edge switches. Now remember, those are just momentary switches. I've got an A less than X and I've got a sticky. We'll break them down one by one. Logical switch number one is an edge switch, which remember is a momentary switch, just a flick on and off. And what, that, what this momentary switch says is when SA is down, all the way down, just blink. So L1 activates for a moment and it goes back off. That's all this does. SA goes down. L01 illuminates for a moment and then goes off. L02 says if SA is in the middle position, blink or activate momentarily. But notice I've got a stipulation in here that says only if it's in the middle position for three tenths of a second. I'll cover what this does in detail later, but effectively what's going on is it creates enough of a delay while I move my switch through the middle position not to activate L02. So I move through the middle position and down to the bottom position and L02 doesn't necessarily activate. You kind of have to pause on L02 for just a three tenths of a second. Okay, L03 says that if timer one is less than 301 and I use the 01 as a delay for the computer to get caught up. If you don't use it, you wind up off the top of the mark. So instead of being three minutes, you'll get a readout that says 259. So by adding a one second delay, it lets the computer catch up. And then all the readouts are done at the top of the mark or ending in a zero or a 15 or a 30 or whatever. So it's just in there to accommodate the computer, the delay for processing. L04 is a sticky switch. And what this says is if L3 is true, go on. If L3 is not true, go off. So think of this like a light switch. This switch is either on or off, and it depends on what's going on with three. So if three is less than 301, then L3 is active and sticky L4 goes on. If L03 is not less than 301, so that's the bang, the exclamation, not L03. So if L3 is not less than 301, 
then V2 is true and the switch is off. It's like a light switch, it's either on or off. It goes on when timer one is less than 301 and it's off when timer one is not less than 301. It's that simple. Okay, we're rounding third and coming to home and we're on to special functions. Okay, under special functions, we're gonna look at three different things. The first one is L01. L01 is defined when SA goes down. When the SA switch is moved down, L01 is a momentary switch that lights. So when L01 activates, we want to reset timer one. And of course that's enabled with the check mark in the on field over here. The second thing that we want when L01 illuminates is we want to play the value of timer one. And we only want that to happen when we activate the switch, not during startup. Effectively what this does is resets the timer. So when you move SA all the way down, it activates the momentary switch or the edge switch and it resets the timer. That's all that's happening here and then it'll play the timer for you to tell you that it's happened. So let's look at that in the simulator real quick. And oh, by the way, I want you to know I set my timer to be three minutes and 10 seconds just for the purpose of saving time in the video. So my main flight timer now is only three minutes, 10 seconds. Okay, so SA is up right now. I'm gonna hit the throttle and my counter should start counting down. Now, if I bring SA down, all the way to the bottom, watch what happens to my flight timer. Three minutes and 10 seconds. It goes back to three minutes and 10 seconds and then just starts counting down again. So you can either three leave it there minutes and 10 seconds. or you can put it back up to the top position. Either one is fine. Okay, so that's how we reset our timer. And that's a very basic function that you probably want on all of your planes. I have it on pretty much all of mine. I definitely have a switch enabled to reset my timer in case I want to. So here's where the magic starts. Here's where the fun stuff actually starts. Let's say, for example, you're out flying and you're, you've got your timer going. Everybody's happy. The airplane's happy. You're having a good time. And then you suddenly get down to the bottom of your timer and you start getting your alerts. Three minutes. You start getting your alerts at the bottom of your timer and you decide the, the plane's fly, fine. I've been taking it easy on the battery, so I'm going to fly for just one extra minute. That's what, L2, zero, that's what L02 does. No matter what the value of timer one, it sets timer one to one minute. So there's a special function in here called set timer one. And I chose set timer one and I set the value to be one minute. And then additionally, I want an audible prompt that tells me when I activate L02, to tell me that I set the timer to one minute. So let's try it. Now remember, L02 only activates, it's an edge switch, if we've been in that middle position for at least three tenths of a second. So you can move it into SA and leave it there, but it has to be there for at least three tenths of a second in order to work. All right, so let's try it out. Okay, we're out flying around, everything's going good. We get to the bottom of our timer and we re realize we wanna add a minute to our timer. So watch. Three minutes. So watch L02 illuminate when I move SA to the middle position. One minute. Okay, L2 illuminated and our timer got set to one minute. Now notice the idea here is I move that stick back to the up position and by putting it in the up position, we have the option of adding another minute if we want to. Go down to the middle. One minute. We're back to a minute. Anytime you want to just give yourself one extra minute of flying and not completely forget about your timer, this is a way to do it. You're just giving yourself an extra minute. One, one minute. minute. Okay, if you want to completely reset, you skip past the middle position and go all the way down to the bottom. Three, Three minutes and, that and ten seconds. And that completely resets the timer. All right, the last thing I want to cover are the alerts that I set up. So remember earlier I said you can either have a countdown timer set up to give you beeps, voice, or haptics starting at 30 seconds, and or you can enable the minute call. So the minute call just basically calls out your time every minute on the minute. Well, I don't like that, it's too invasive for me. So the last idea here is L04. If we go back to L04 and look, what this says is once our flight timer is less than three minutes, then we want to go active. So once we're less than three minutes, we're going to play a sound, ratata and we're gonna beep every 10 seconds, and then we're also gonna play the value of timer one every 30 seconds. Again, these are just examples. You could say, I want this to be every 15 seconds, and I want this to be every minute, or every 30 seconds. You can do whatever you want, okay? They're just, just examples. Again, 
L04 will activate when our timer goes below three minutes. So let's take a look at what happens in the simulator when L04 goes active. So when I turn this on, pay attention to L04. So here's our simulator. We're out flying around. Our timer's moving down. Keep an eye on L04. When we get less than 301, L4 goes live. Three minutes. There you go. And I think we had it, what, every 15 seconds? Yep, every 15 seconds. So at 2.45, right in here, we should get another beep warning. But see, no minute call, right? You could set the minute call to be every 15 seconds if you want, but we have our minute call set for 30 seconds. So at, when this hits 3.0, we should get a minute call and a beep. Two minutes and 30 seconds. See how that works? Now 2.15, we should get just a beep. And then at two minutes, we should get a beep and a minute call. two minutes okay if you want to fool around with this you can do other things too like you can say um, you can put another logical switch in that says hey once we get under 30 seconds I want to beep every five seconds you know there, there are all kinds of different things you can do with this I wanted to just give you an example of a way to massage the alerts that you get from default in OpenTX and that's what we accomplished Hey, if you're not a channel subscriber, I just want to point out that 66% of my viewers don't subscribe. And it really helps channels, small channels like this one, grow when we're, our subscriber base grows. So I appreciate it. If you keep coming back to watch the content, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. And you'll be notified anytime I post new material. And then you can come back and you don't have to go out and look for it. For all of you who are regular contributors and subscribers of the channel, thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate that you take part in our C video reviews. I hope you enjoyed today's content and this little example on how to play and have fun with timers. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Okay, so that's it for timer types. Let's take a look at the alert types you have available to you. So you notice there's a... Thanks a lot, Windows. Okay, so that covers the timer types. <laughs> okay, so that covers the timer types. Let's take a look at the alerts that we have available by default. Okay, so if all you wanted to understand were the basics of timers in OpenTX, enjoy your enjoy the rest. Okay, so if blah, 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 blah. now I need you to think of this like a light switch. Okay, sticky switches say when V1 is true, go on. When V2 is true, go on. But it no. I need you to think, okay, so think of it just like a light switch. So you're, this, this switch says is either, it's like a light switch. It's either on or off. It goes, we're going to play a sound, rat a tat tat, ratata, ratata, rat tat, ratata.